Bravo, you are in the last unit in the course. Unit 5, selecting appropriate OER. To end this course with you is Professor Inegbedion Juliet Owajaji. I am sure you are happy that you have been able to walk through the course to the end. Well done. In Unit 3 of Week 4, we learned about learning resources and how learning resources are selected. The use of OERs were recognized among available learning resources. Also, we, learn, we have learned that OERs are free resources, but with conditions guiding the usage. We must not forget that in online learning, it is easier to detect plagiarized documents. Therefore, we must be careful in our selection. What we must not do when selecting an OER material for online learning. Next is the stated learning outcome for the course or topic. Read the OER materials to see if it meets the stated learning outcomes. In this regard, identify the skills required to meet the learning outcomes and study the OER content to identify such skills. The suitability of the OER materials should range between 90 to 100 percent. This is where you can say that the material is suitable for adoption. But if you are to adapt the material, the percentage level of suitability to learning outcome should not be less than 60 percent. A higher value should be left for the original author of the content to be adapted. Secondly, we look at the context. Conceptualize the OER material to check for its suitability in the learning environment. For instance, if you are to use OER pictures, choose pictures that will speak to the users, that is, the learners. The same goes to when you are to use an existing research instrument. You can adopt the instrument if it means your research questions or hypothesis. Now, let's look at the second, uh, the third uh, point. The third point is pay attention to the copyrights. We have learned so much in week three on the principles guiding the use of OER materials. So special attention must be paid to every OER material you intend to use for learning. Obey the rights of the author. Then the fourth point, design first before choosing the resource. Some instructors or institutions rush to using OERs in online learning without designing the course. This action may hinder learning. In design, you look at the characteristics of the learner, the learner's requirements, institutional needs, the type of support available, learning outcomes, learning activities, assessment, and the learning resources. The learning resources is dependent on others. It is when you are selecting the learning resources that you need the open educational resources. Therefore, I say design, design, design before rushing into using OER. Now, we have to look at the collaboration aspect of it. In the aspect of collaboration, institutions within the same environment that is to say, institutions that share the same context can collaborate to create OER materials for integration into online learning. This takes us to a simple plan on how to integrate OERs in online learning. I prefer using the table format, which guides the integration as presented below. Now, looking at the format for integrating OER in online learning, here we have the topic or unit. You can classify it whichever way you want to classify it. Maybe your own context, you could call it module or unit, or maybe module, uh, maybe topic, depends on how you want to classify it. Then here you have learning outcome, then the learning activities, learning resources, then required OERs. So the first thing here is to look at the topic you want to really uh, look at. Here, the topic we're looking at is defining learning outcomes. Now, what is the uh, learning outcome? 
for this defining learning outcome. By the end of this topic, you will be able to define measurable learning outcome at different cognitive domain level. Then differentiate between well-structured learning outcomes from those that are poorly structured. This is the target. This is what you want the student to be able to do at the end of this particular uh, learning, which is defining learning outcomes. So in this way, what are the activities that the students will be exposed to? that they will be able to learn how to meet up with this learning outcome, that they will be able to come up with definitions that goes with the cognitive domains at different levels and be able to differentiate what is good in defining learning outcome and the poorly defined learning outcomes. So you now have to look around, what will you give to them to do? Here, identify well-structured learning outcome from group of learning outcomes. It means you're going to give them an activities where they will be able to achieve this. You're going to give them activities to choose a topic and they will be able to stay to measurable learning outcomes and indicate their cognitive level. These are the activities that they're going to do. So what resources will they require that will enable them to do these activities and at the same time meet up with the learning outcome? First and foremost, you want to expose them to taxonomy of learning objectives. Secondly, you want to have an animated young boy who is taught how to ride a bicycle with focus on setting the learning outcome and activities. Then you want to be able to demonstrate how the learning outcomes were achieved. That is why you are using this animated uh, object. So in this case, what are you going to do? It means you have to now look around. This creating the video, for instance, is this something you want to create or there is already an existing video that can fit into this? Now, looking at the taxonomy of educational objective, are you the one that is developing it or there is already an existing one? Somebody came up with this terminology. So what do I now need to do? I have to look at, okay, I have a resource somewhere which is already in existence. I don't really need to start creating from afresh. And what resource will I get? Because so many people now have talked about taxonomy of educational objective. I said, well, let me get the work of Inegbejo 2020 on application of Bloom taxonomy. Bloom is known as someone who has come up with the cognitive level of the taxonomy. But Inegbejo in this instance may have worked using Bloom taxonomy that will be able to bring in concrete application that will help the learners achieve this learning outcome. So if I now pick this work, I have to make sure that using that OER work is in line with what is being stated in the area of licensing, copyright issue, and the rest of them. Then the second part, ah, no, I don't have one that I know offhand. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to search for appropriate animated video on the bicycle activities. In this case, I have in mind also that if I have to produce it, I may not have all that it takes for me to produce that animated object to demonstrate it but however if i go online i may see an object that have already been done in this slide that will depict what i want to show the student that will depict what i want the student to learn and i will go in for it and going for it remember it's an open source i'm not going to look for open source because there will be other sources that are not open that i may need to pay for so my concern now is that I'm not going to look for such sources. I'm going to look for one that is free, and I'll have to look at the usage right also. Because if the usage right said share alike, and I have to look at my content, can I share it exactly the way it is? If it doesn't meet with that, then I have to choose the one that will depict the exact thing that I want to do. So this is how you work your uh, OERs into your online Content. In conclusion, in this course, we have learned about open educational resources, online learning, and how to integrate open educational resources into online learning. Remember, the copyright laws in the use of OERs, what online learning truly represents, and integration of open educational resources into online learning is guided by the learning outcome, learning activities, required resources, and the context.
Doing it right is the way to go.